Now you see what Don's doing there. He's lifting up those corners. He's overstretching it in the vertical or Z plane. Again, remember, we don't want the fiber to be pulled tight to the top. We don't want the fiber to pull tight to this radius. We want to stretch this vertical wall here so that it's pushing down and touching that gel coat surface below, as well as when we close the mold, this will touch the upper mold. We want that entire area cross-sectionally, as well as everywhere else in the part, to be filled with fiber. We don't want the fiber to be bridging through as the radiuses and the geometry changes in the mold. This is absolutely critical, and that's the beauty of these types of materials that we have today. They help that by that, that springing out effect by either the glass in the center or the polypropylene felt helps push the fiber to each side. And remember, this is indicative of our concern over the fiber and the resin interacting as we're flowing through the mold. We need a bit of resistance in the front. See, if we have glass that's in the front of the resin flow, but it gets to a radius and the glass is pulled tight to one or the other side of the mold, the resin says, oh, well, I'm not going to go through that glass. I'll go down and around where there's a gap in the mold between the glass and the mold surface. So we want that glass to fill up the mold, give us a bit of resistance so we create a full wave front of resin flowing through. Let's let Don finish. See here, Don has cut the fiber. You saw him cut it once, form it around. He's brought the other side over. Now he has an overlap. He's going to cut that overlap off. But in a moment here, you're going to see that he's going to stretch the, the each side so that we, by stretching it and forming it over the seam, that butt joint that he created, we end up with an overlap. But yet, by stretching it, we didn't create double the thickness of the fiber. So here we can gain a bit of feathering of the edges. Another beauty of these types of materials. As you watch Don work, you say, well, he sure makes it look easy. Well, that's just it. We've worked here at JHM Technologies to help bring simplicity to this process, as well as the material suppliers, the resin, the fibers, the release agents. We've all worked in harmony today, and we have now a very practical, simple, a process one that generally a, a, a moderately skilled operator can do a repeatable process day in, day out. Now, we do require a bit of skill, a bit of paying attention to detail on the fiber loading. When we get to the injection, you'll see there we've taken the advancements here at JHM to bring the equipment in line, much like the injection molding industry, where just a single fire and forget type of technology, one button, as it were, pushing, injects the resin into the mold at the precise measurements of process control. Here, we are relying on the operator's skill, but even still, even though Don, he may have nearly 30 years of doing this, it is as about as easy as he's making it look. It's a simple process to load the fiber. Just have to pay attention to detail, forming it, pushing it into those radiuses, stretching it on those vertical walls a bit, just ensuring that that fiber fits tightly to the geometry of the part. So we'll go ahead and let Don in.
can see that Don is trimming the glass to the edge of that gel coat that he had applied earlier. While that extends just beyond the edge of part, generally we'll extend it about three quarters of an inch. There are times that we can mold to net shape, but most commonly, in fact, 99% of the time, we're molding out and beyond edge of part, expecting once the part is finished out of the mold, that it will be trimmed precisely to the edge of parts uh, design. So what we have then is we have glass extending out. Why do we not mold all parts to net? Because we cannot get the glass to remain perfectly to the edge with most shapes. There are occasions where the shape is such that the fiber can be tucked to a corner, to an edge, to an, an undercut, and it will stay there. If it can stay to the edge and we can reliably assure that it will, then we can mold to net shape. Net meaning we don't need to trim, like you think of thermoplastic injection molding. But normally, we mold beyond the edge of part and then trim back half, three quarters of an inch. And part of your original design in the mold, the, the pattern that the mold's made from, you consider then where your trim line is going to be, where the fiber is going to extend. That has to be added and considered in the original design of the pattern. In this case, this, this part trims back here, uh, so we, we've got more than enough fiber. We, we're just concerned that if the fiber shrunk back from the edge, then you would have resin richness that would chip and crack on that edge. Fiber is the key to the strength and has to be right out to the leading edge of the part. Well, I think at this point, we're loaded. We'll wipe this flange down. But in the next scene, we're going to talk about the upper, how it's designed, how it influences the resin flow, comes to the vent in the center. We'll close the mold, and then the exciting part, the injector. Stand by. <laughs>